Hello everyone, my name is Mariam Mokta. I'd like to ask you a question. Let's assume that you are a normal person like me and you are not a taiko or a businessman or a money lender. So what is the largest amount of cash, wang tunai, that you have withdrawn from a bank to take back to your office or back to your house or your workplace. Now, would you carry over 100,000 ringgits in a bag over your shoulder or in your briefcase? Would you? A few days ago, on the 16th of January, the headmaster of a primary school in Semenye withdrew 109 thousand ringgits from a bank before losing all of it when the cash was stolen two hours later. The circumstances of the theft are very suspicious. The headmaster's movements upon withdrawing the money are themselves questionable. Now, was the 50-year-old headmaster careless was he negligent? Was he eye-wateringly stupid? Or was he a party to this crime? The two questions immediately spring to mind. Then the first, was this an inside job? The sequence of events indicates something very fishy going on. And secondly, we live in the 21st century Modern technology and advanced banking practices are thrust upon us. If some people are unable to electronically transfer money, so how about using crossed checks? 109,000 ringgits was stolen and the taxpayer has reimbursed this money. So. If the people responsible for committing this crime, they, if they are not severely punished, and that includes the headmaster, thefts of a similar nature will recur. What do you think? The Malaysian taxpayer cannot be treated as a bottomless pit to be called upon to bail out every loss, every theft or every careless act by a civil servant. According to the Minister of Education, Fadrina Sidek, the headmaster breached the standard operating procedure when he failed to request a police escort or at least ask for another teacher to accompany him. So, why did the headmaster fail to observe the SOP? Is he by nature an, an irresponsible man? Was this his first withdrawal of a huge amount of cash? Was he so arrogant to think that he could overpower a snatch thief? More incriminating news followed. Having withdrawn the money from the bank at 10 in the morning, the headmaster placed the money in a bag and left this on the front passenger seat of his car before going for a drink in a nearby restaurant. Would you be stupid enough to do this? Would you do this if this was your own hard-earned money and not the ministry or the school's money? Leaving the bag behind was like extending an open invitation to robbers. Come, take this money. So I ask again, do you think he would have committed the same stupidity if the 109,000 ringgits had been his own money, do it sendiri. Why was he deliberately careless? He acted with extreme naivety, assuming that no one would suspect that the bag on the front passenger seat contained anything valuable. He didn't even bother to hide the bag under the front seat. He could have locked the bag in the boot for extra security. 
these two positions would have been preferential than just placing the bag on the front passenger seat where everyone could see. Opportunist thieves will smash and grab without a moment's hesitation. Drug addicts will not think twice about breaking the window and then running off with anything that looks resellable. These people are desperate and they will be satisfied with a few ringgits to fund their next quick fix. For the druggie, even an empty bag can be sold as long as their addiction can be satisfied. Even a few ringgits will do. So having withdrawn the large sum of cash, a conscientious and responsible headmaster would have immediately returned to school and not loiter around in town like this man did. Now when he was at the bank, he could have been observed by potential crooks who would mark him as their target before tailing him. They would have patiently waited for the opportune moment to steal the money from their victim. Here was the headmaster of a village school withdrawing a huge sum of money and he wasn't even accompanied by other teachers or even the school staff or a security guard. Now here is the other questionable act. This headmaster did not appear to make effective use of his time. He may have gone to the bank during school hours to perform an official job of withdrawing money intended for school children. That's fine. However, that did not give him the right to go for an extended drink at a nearby restaurant during school hours. The rakyat pays his gaji, his wages. He cannot just go out and minom or makan or lepa just because he feels like it. Mana, I understand it. Why couldn't this headmaster return to the school and have a drink at school? He withdrew the money at 10 in the morning, but he only lodged the report two and a quarter hours later. Now the time lag is significant. How long does it take to withdraw cash? Now the bank would have been alerted well in advance to prepare the money for the headmaster. The headmaster probably did not have to queue up but he would have been shown, you know, admitted to the bank manager's office. Moreover, how long does it take to have a drink? A headmaster who does not know how to make best use of his time is not an asset to the school. If he bends the rules, how can he expect his students and his staff to act responsibly? Earlier that morning, the headmaster would presumably have told his personal assistant that he was going to the bank. The PA and school administrative staff would have been primed to receive this huge amount of cash and they would have made preparations um, before the headmaster returns with the cash. The staff would have planned to either store this money safely in the school safe or immediately distribute it to the needy school children for which the money had been intended. So, was this an inside job? What do you think? The headmaster would be carrying a huge sum of money all by himself. Now, what has the headmaster to say about this? And here's another question. Why cash? Mengapa wang tunai? If the money is for needy school children, is the headmaster going to hand this money out to the children? And does that mean the school children or their parents would have to return home carrying large amounts of cash? They would face potential danger and become targets for muggers. So if you have experience of this in your child's school, do tell us. And the other important question is, what happened to internet banking? Semenye and parts of Selongo, Selango, are they still third world status? Both the education and finance ministries must think of better solutions for safe banking 
for the school and the school children. I hope the police do a very thorough investigation because this theft is very, very fishy. Why should the taxpayer pay out twice? Just because a headmaster was careless or negligent or stupid or something. Thank you for listening. Speak to you soon. If you like my videos, please press like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please also visit my Patreon channel if you wish to sponsor me. Thank you.